All right, guys, here's just a taste of what you're going to see when I start doing my product reviews. Uh, so I've got two camp stoves here. One is the MSR wind boiler. And what you can see here, basically, this is a personal cooking system. The second pot I have here is a jet boil. Uh, this jet boil I've used for a while, and I've recently migrated over to the MSR pro boiler. So, uh, or the wind boiler, I apologize. So let's take a look at them. Uh, again, this is just something for fun. This uh, product review video will actually go more in depth at a later time. Uh, honestly, I'm just screwing around tonight because I got nothing better to do. So uh, enjoy, let me know what you think, and we'll, uh, we'll keep rocking. All right, guys, here we go. So I told you I was gonna compare the two pots. One is the MSR wind boiler. The other one is the jet boil. Pot's very similar in size. Uh, this is the jet boil flash. And this is the, of course I told you already, it was a wind boiler. This is a one liter pot. And this is made by Mountain Safety Research. The jet boil pot is a little over a liter, uh, but it's made by jet boil, which is a proprietary company. So first thing I wanna do is I wanna talk about the jet boil. I've had the jet boil now for a little over a year and I upgraded from that to the wind boiler for a couple of reasons, which I'll get into when I talk about the wind boiler, but I was having some issues with it and there's some things I don't like about it. So again, this is not a slam on jet boil. A lot of people use them and they like them. Um, I don't have any complaints about it that are major. Most of my stuff is just more nuanced things that bother me, but uh, it's still all around. It's not a bad cooking system if you're doing some light to moderate camping. Um, works great because you can just throw it in your pack. Uh, I'm experimenting with some other types of cook systems um, and you'll see those kind of as we go down the road. But let's let's get started on the jet boil. So first things first, you have a cup here on the bottom and this cup is graduated to one cup, which I've got my finger there on the mark, so I don't know if you can see that in the camera. But anyway, you can use that to measure your water. The, this does hold safely two cups. Um, so if you are boiling water, you don't put any more than two cups in there. Otherwise, you'll get splash over and make a huge mess. So with the jet boil, you have the flux ring. This is what is used for heat transfer so that when you apply your heating element, uh, it transfers the heat to the bottom of the cup and allows it to boil. Uh, one of the things I really like about jet boil is the neoprene cover and the handle. It makes it easy to to hold and maintain and, and it keeps the, uh, the scorching heat off of it. You do have a little sleeve right here that you can stick a spoon into if you need to. And then on the side here, this is a uh, indicator for temperature. So as you cook with the jet boil, this will illuminate into a yellow color. Uh, we are not gonna fire up the jet boil tonight. Number one, we are inside. And um, number two, I was having some problems with the burner. Part of the reason why I have updated to the wind boiler. So on the cup, you have a vent release here you can actually if you're using this for fluids you can actually drink out of the cup uh, it's got a mouthpiece there and allows you to just dump that out so inside you have a pot stand and what that allows you to do is you can take your fuel canister uh, this one is an msr iso pure same type of fuel you can buy it from a lot of different companies but anyway the pot stand is universal so that any size will fit in there and it just adds for adds a uh, stable platform because your unit will all base itself off of this so i am going to go ahead and pull this off the top just to show you kind of how this all goes together second thing is you've got your burner so there's your heating element it screws on to the fuel canister here and then this is your valve and counterclockwise opens the valve. Now, one of the things that this has, it comes equipped with its own igniter. Now again, if you're not using this very often, that's not too bad. However, with the amount of use that I had on it, excuse me, uh, igniter was the first thing to go. Um, there's a hole right there, which you can kind of see. That's where the, the piezo igniter came up through the bottom of the uh, of the unit into there and uh, lit. So one of the, the big reasons related to this that I changed is the fact that I went to replace this when it went out 
they sell a replacement part. However, the replacement part does not line up with any of the mounting brackets, as well as when you try to feed it through the top of the cup. Uh, there's not any good documentation. I went to YouTube and I figured out that something changed in the burner design of the series. However, the two pieces were not compatible because they did not go together. So I went ahead and took it all the way out and have used this as just a standard burner um, using matches, a striker, or anything like that. But the way this works is this twists on just like so. Once you get it on nice and tight, you can hit your valve. And again, I'm not going to fire it up. Uh, I will be firing up the MSR, but this one I will not fire up. Uh, I don't know if you can hear that, but it doesn't take much and the gas will start coming out. Now, the way this works is your pot rests. There's these little detents here. They rest in here. You just twist it to kind of lock it into place. And that's the kit all together. This goes on top, fill it with water, turn this on, light it. Heat will heat up the flux ring, thus heating up the fluids, and uh, that'll turn yellow. I'll do a side-by-side -side burn test later on when I can be outside and it's not very windy. Uh, but for right now, that's that's the kit as it stands. So again, not a bad kit. However, my issue is with the burner and the igniter. So I'm gonna take this off and make sure that that is closed. We're gonna spin this out. And then you just loop that back underneath here. The nice thing about both of these systems is that they're designed to accommodate everything right inside the cup. So I could take a smaller burn can, set it right on top. I can put this uh, pot stabilizer in right on top as well. Put the lid on it and this feeds in just like that and you're done. So that is the jet burner. Now, like I said, I had some issues with it. The burner I didn't think was very reliable, especially after it broke, so I upgraded, and now I'm using the MSR Wind Boiler 1 liter pot. Now, as you can probably see, I have a cup here, and it's on ounces and milliliters. And so you can easily convert whatever you're doing. Uh, holds about a little bit more liquid in here than it does in this one. Now, if you notice, the bottom of this is a little bit different in that they use these striations. There is also a contour inside so that as the heat rises, it actually goes not just on the bottom of the pan, but then around the sides of the pan on the bottom. So you've got a nice little layer here all the way around that will heat the liquid. And it allows for a little bit faster boiling. It does have a nice neoprene cover. Uh, what I can say about this one compared to the jet boil is this is also a lot cleaner to maintain as it's more of a uh, synthetic material and, and not the mesh. Uh, the handle leaves a little bit to be desired. Uh, I do like this strap better than I like this one, but uh, I can live with it. So this has the same type of lid. You've got a steam vent, you can drink out of it. Uh, it's also vented here if you need to strain it because you don't want something coming out. Now, this is the pot stabilizer. It works like this, and I don't like it. I think this one is chintzy compared to the, uh, the jet boil. The jet boil just feels a lot tighter when you open and close it. Whereas this one is very loose uh, and I've struggled with it. This one doesn't even stay on and this, you know, this is a brand new pot. So uh, not a fan of this. I probably won't keep this around. MSR does make a metal one, but I might as well just throw this one in the pot. It'll work fine for me. Also, one of the big advantages to MSR is their burner. If you notice, look at the burning area here compared to the burning area of the jet boil. 
So this allows for a faster, more efficient burn as opposed to this one, in my opinion. Again, I know there's some tried or true jet boil people out there not knocking it, just like this one better. Now the one downside, if you want to call it a downside to MSR, is that this one you have to manually light. So there is no self-igniter. You have to utilize uh, a sh striking flint script lighter like this or a uh, match or you know whatever you have to light it, but you will light it from the top. Um, it does have holes for ventilation. Now this has a built-in thermal protection thing on it. I don't know exactly what they call it, but there's a wire right here that runs across the top. I don't know if you can see that, but that is your thermal trip. So if that gets too hot, uh, it'll cause this to shut down in case you're not paying attention. And you can go in, there is an adjustment that you can use on this side. You can go in through that hole right there and make your adjustment as needed. Uh, this also has a regulator right here. And we're going to turn it all the way off. And it spins onto the pot just the same, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Alright, so you always want to make sure you get that good and tight. So there it is, it's on there. Now if you had the pot, as you can see, you've got a lot more indentions as opposed to this one only had four. So this one, you don't have to try as hard to find a place to lock it in. Once you've got it in place, that is how the unit looks up close. All right, and then you can stick the lid back on top. And you're good to go. So just to show you how easy this thing is to light, and I am going to light this one. I do have the window open behind me. For ventilation and I'm not going to keep it on for very long but all you have to do is you just rotate this knob just a little bit and then just apply the flame and that's that as you can see the first thing that lights up is that heating coil and this thing puts off a lot of heat I'm going to crank it up just so you can kind of see there's a lot of gas coming out of there a lot of heat and it'll start glowing red hot here very shortly and so once you get this going, you kind of dial it into wherever you need to, and you set your pot up top. I'm not going to because I don't have any fluid in here and you don't want to burn up your pot that way. But I'm going to go ahead and shut this down. And let it cool. So there you go. That is uh, kind of a comparison between the wind boiler and the jet boil. Hope you enjoyed the video and uh, keep in touch. Check back, I'm gonna do another one of these side by side with a boil test and uh, we'll go from there. Have a Last thing I wanted to talk about is Moose Jaw. Uh, Moose Jaw is actually where I got the MSR wind boiler. Uh, great company to do some outfitting. I'm not being paid to advertise. I just wanted to share this sticker with you. Uh, Moose Jaw, it's where you go for backpacking, climbing, French kissing, mountaineering, and trail running. Have a good night.